Hi everyone, I hope all of you are having a wonderful day. Welcome back to EP Science Virtual Class. This is Genrox Educator TV, your host for today. Are you guys ready? Alright, let's go! For today's video, you will learn about the interdependence among living organisms. Have you ever wondered how do animals and other living organisms or even human beings interact with one another within the ecosystem? Now, what are those vocabulary words that we should be familiar with? Right? Since we talk about the interdependence of organisms. Alright, so say for example, we have species. Species. Next, population. Population. Community. Community. Habitat. Habitat. Ecosystem. Ecosystem. Now, let's familiarize about those words. See, for example, species. Species. So, what does that mean? It is an organism with common characteristics. That means to say that, for example, this one is a species of birds. Species can breed among themselves to produce fertile offspring. So, means to say they could produce babies or offsprings, right? See, for example, tadpole, okay? So, they are belongs to frog family, right? Snail, so various kind of snail. What about plants? Like water lilies. Next one is population. Population. What does that mean? A population is made up of a number of organisms on the same species. So we are talking about how many within that group. No? We talk about the quantity or numbers. How large are they? When we talk about the word population, the indicator there is the counting or the numbers of an organism who lived particularly in one place as a family, as the same species or group. See, for example, a population of mankind the population of an animals at the zoo, right? A population of the plant breeding, okay, which grows in that particular area. So that is what we call a population. We count a certain numbers or group within the same species. Population talks about how many or how large just the population is all right a population of an animals a population of the people who live in that particular country or place we will talk about community so what is community which community do you belongs to all right so it is made up of many populations living together in a particular place or habitat. Say for example, where do fishes live? Where do people live? What are those communities? Okay, students community. So a group of students study together at school. So that is community. Can you name another examples of community? What is your community? Which community do you belong to? Alright, a community of teachers, community of students. Next one, we will talk about habitat. Habitat. 
So what comes into your mind about the word habitat? Where do they live? Where do you live? Where I lived, right? So that is what we call habitat. I live at school. I live at home. In what particular place? Remember, that is a place where the organisms obtain its food, shelter, and protection. It is also a place where animals or human beings reproduce, right? Produce another offspring or another species. So that is what we call habitat. The last component of this vocabulary is ecosystem ecosystem an ecosystem refers to the community of an organisms living in the same habitat they live together with the non-living components right so see for example an ecosystem is made up of biotic components what does that mean the living components or living organisms so in other words that is biotic component the other one is abiotic components abiotic components in other words non-living components or non-living organisms all the organisms they live together in one place say for example land ecosystem water ecosystem right forest ecosystem and so on so what are the organisms who live in a water ecosystem or in other word aquatic ecosystem all right so those organisms for example are fish snails tadpoles water lilies water weeds planktons crabs, streams, and many others. What are those non-living components lived in the same place like water ecosystem? All right, say for example, rocks, stone, sand, water, and all other types of minerals under the water. All right, so that is basically they are in one place or the same ecosystem both living component and non-living component we have forest ecosystem that is a place where different kind of animals live there or endangered species or wildlife what are those organisms lived in that particular wetland and grassland ecosystem usually like us human being we live in land or terrestrial ecosystem and what about those in grassland okay so those are herbivores or in animals this time i'm going to show you about the relationships between species population and community in a paddy field ecosystem please look at this one the paddy field ecosystem right so these are composed of all the living components in the paddy field community then on the other side there is non-living components in the paddy field it consists of under the living components these are population one many paddy plants Population 2, many caterpillars. 3, many snakes. Population 4, there are many birds. Then under that population, there are species like different types of paddy plants. In population 2, there are species like types of caterpillar. Then in population 3, there are species like different kind of snakes. And then in a population 4, there are different species, what we call family of birds. And what about the non-living components in that paddy field? Alright, 
So those living components are soil, air, water, and minerals. So that is usually composed of one ecosystem. Do you know who are those group of people who used to study the living things and their relationship to its environment? Who are they? Do you have any idea? Surely that person who focused on studying about the organisms and its interaction to its environment is what we call ecologist. They are what? Ecologist. Do you believe that the interdependence of an organism creates a balanced ecosystem? Yes or no? How do the interdependence of organism plays an important role in our ecosystem? What are their contributions to our environment? How do they play about survival of the fittest? How do they grow? How do they live? How do they feed themselves? In what particular way? So that is a big question that we have to find out. The natural ecosystems are mostly complex. There are many populations living together in the same habitat. That is why there is what we call competition, right? So they compete for food in order to survive. Remember that the different populations are interdependent in one another. So it means the interaction between an organisms from one place to another place and with the non-living components for survival. So how do they grow and survive? The common cause of an interaction between organisms and the environment is the need for food, shelter, and protection. That is why competition arises. You might wonder why plants can manufacture or it has the potential to produce their own food. It is because, remember, we have a certain process of photosynthesis, right? Because of the power of the photosynthesis, which is the main source of energy, plants can manufacture their own food. That is a reliant source of an interaction with non-living components such as sunlight, right? Air and water. Animals cannot make their own food and so depend on the other organisms for food and on plants for the supply of oxygen. There were some organisms depend on the other organisms for food, shelter, and protection. Some insects such as bees and butterflies obtain food like pollen and nectar from the flowers. In that process of obtaining food, these insects helped in the pollination of flowers. Some plants rely on wind and water for pollination and seed dispersal. Therefore, the interdependence among organisms and the environment creates a balanced ecosystem. So it's a big yes. It creates a balanced ecosystem. So what do you mean by a balanced ecosystem? It is one which does not appear to change very much over a period of time. It also provides organism with all their daily needs such as food, nutrients, gases, water, shelter, and their mates. Right? Slight changes in the number of one species will offset the number of other species. The ecosystem would take time to become balanced again. 
in order to maintain a balanced ecosystem there are following factors what are those number one the number of individuals in a different populations number two the number of populations in a different communities number three the composition of gases in the air and the quality of air the last one is the available sources like water soil and all other nutrients so all of those to have a balanced ecosystem all those things are needed in order that all organisms will be able to survive human being needs work in order to supply their needs like food shelter this is the end of our part one video about this lesson interdependence among organisms thank you so much for watching this video i hope you learned something from this please don't forget to answer your quizzes and assignment in the google classroom at the ap website Thank you so much. Good luck. Stay home. Stay safe. Enjoy learning. See you guys in our next video about the interaction between organisms.